parts of the world. The earth began to shake everywhere, in northern Italy, in the Philippines, worst of all in China and in Central America. In August 76, there were clear indications that the volcano La Soufrière on the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe was about to erupt. The mountain had emitted its first signs in spring that year and scientists had been flown in. Things began to take a dramatic turn towards the end of August. What was expected was no ordinary eruption, but an explosion of the whole volcano with a force of at least five or six atomic bombs. Thus, 75,000 inhabitants were evacuated from the surroundings of the volcano, the whole southern part of the island. I was immediately fascinated when I read in a newspaper that one single poor peasant living on the very slopes of the volcano had refused to be evacuated. The very same day I set out, together with my two cameramen, Jörg Schmidt-Reitwein and Ed Lackmann. Next day we were already in Basseterre, on the southern tip of the island, a town of 17,000 inhabitants, which was most threatened. The place was completely deserted, but in their haste they had forgotten to switch off the traffic lights. Telephones were still working, and the air conditioning and refrigerators in many houses were still on. In one house we even found a TV set still operating. This is the police station. It was entirely abandoned. It was a comfort for us, not having the law hanging around. Most of the shops had been cleared, but in frantic haste. This is a shoe shop. The silence was eerie, just a few doors banging in the wind and water dripping. Animals had taken over the streets. We came across donkeys, pigs, chickens and especially dogs. The dogs had gone without food for days. There was no more garbage to scavenge. They had even stopped barking. We found many of them starving and the place stank of carrion. It was as spooky as a science fiction locale. This is the pier, devoid of ships. The situation became very tense during the night. There was a seismic crisis marked by 1400 tremors and shock waves within 10 hours. The mountain seemed about to explode and the last of the scientists had fled in a boat. It was said that the catastrophe was inevitable within the next few hours. We set up an automatic camera at a distance of 25 miles, which took these pictures. We flew over Basseterre by helicopter. During the flight, we got the impression that these were the last hours of this town and the last pictures ever taken of it.
the sea was full of dead snakes. They had crawled down during the night by the thousands from the mountain jungles and fled into the sea where they promptly drowned. The quiet and deserted atmosphere of the town was so intense that we became fascinated and eager to take a look at the source of the silence, namely at the crater of the volcano itself. All along our path we came across warning signs. The greatest danger came from toxic gases. That day the army roadblocks around an area of 30 miles in diameter had been so tightened that one could not even get through with special permission. We got around the roadblocks by sneaking across country in a car. Our path took us up to nearly 4,000 feet. The volcano itself is almost 4,500 feet high. For the first time we began to get scared. Suddenly a toxic cloud of sulfur fumes ringing the mountain descended and it was all we could do to turn our car around on the narrow path. We hastily retreated a bit and waited. <laughs> 